Hello, welcome to another video and a PBR. You know TBRs? I'm rebranding them as PBRs. Instead of to be read, I'm going for possible books read. So we are going to go through my possibility piles for the month of April for books that I may or may not read. <laughs> One of my goals for the year was like not doing TBRs because I just don't really stick to them. Um, they don't aid my reading the way that they used to. Um, I don't read as much when I've got a set TBR, whereas when I can just kind of bounce around for what I'm in the mood for, um, I tend to read more. So I want to stick to reading more. Um, so a PBR seems like the way to go. However, in April, I have a lot of reading to do. So I am participating in Realmathon. Um, I am one of your Ilma team leaders, sci-fi team. If you haven't already joined Realmathon, I'll leave the announcement link down below. And please join Ilma. We are the superior team. Our genre is sci-fi, but you don't have to only read sci-fi. Yeah, it's fine. Anyway, um, for that reason, I would like to read some sci-fi because I get the bonus points for that. Um, but it's also sci-fi and non-fiction, so I would also like to dip my toes ever so gently into non-fiction, because I don't really read it. But I have a few lined up that I would like to try. On top of Realmathon, I have somehow been roped into a bit of a challenge, um, and I'm going to be attempting 30 books in 30 days. For that reason, I need to stick to some smaller reads. I need the itty bitty ones to actually get me through 30 reads in 30 days. But I don't want to only limit myself to those tiny books in 30 days. So we have options, we have possibilities, hence my PBR, um, but let's go through them. Uh, first up, the ones that I'm weirdly most excited about are my non-fiction picks, which are these. Um, that one has a little tab stuck to it. But these, these are uh, by Seven Dials and they are tiny non-fiction books which are 10 facts that you should know about XYZ. So I have got 10 things you should know about dinosaurs, 10 things you should know about time, and 10 things you should know about space. Not only are they beautiful non-fictions with all that foil, but I think they could be really good bite-size introductions to these topics for me because I'm not a big non-fiction reader. So these tiny little ones with 10 fundamental facts that you should know seems like a really good place to start. I am very interested in space. It terrifies me, but I'm interested in it. So I'm excited about that one. Dinosaurs also fascinate me. I'm interested in that one. Uh, the time one I think is probably going to weird me out because time is weird. Um, so there's that. They do also have some other ones that I was slightly less interested in, but they have 10 facts that you should know about numbers and 10 facts that you should know about the brain. The brain one interests me a little bit more than the numbers one does, um, but if these are really good, then I may get those other ones. And there's a new one coming out in September, which is 10 facts you should know about the deep sea, which very much interests me because similarly to space, the deep sea terrifies me, but I'm really interested in it. Anyway, yeah, these just seemed like a really good place for me to start with nonfiction. And then if I enjoy them, I could read more on those topics, but they are my first three options. Let's talk about some of my sci-fi choices. So, Born by Jeff Vandermeer. Um, I have started this a few times and ended up temporarily DNFing it, so I would like to go back and actually read this. Um, I loved the Southern Reach trilogy by Jeff Vandermeer, one of my favourite trilogies. I don't think I talk about it enough for how much I love it. Um, I adore it. If you haven't read Annihilation, you absolutely should. It's weird. I can appreciate how it might not be for everyone. It can be hard to digest, I guess. Um, but it's under 200 pages, so 
a nice quick weird sci-fi um, and one of my favourites. Um, so logically I should enjoy more from him. So I really want to read Born, and then if I read Born, I want to read Dead Astronauts as well which is kind of like a companion to this but not but kind of. Um, so I want to read Born first. So I want to give this one another shot. Um, and then again on the Jeff Vandermeer train I have Venice Underground. Um, I started this a few weeks back, only read like the first 10 pages or something and thought no I'm gonna save that for April uh, because it's sci-fi seemed like a weird sci-fi and again quite small so shouldn't be unachievable for like a day's read hopefully maybe we will see but yeah I need to read more Jeff Vandermix currently I've only read The Southern Reach and Hummingbird Salamander and I want to read more of his stuff um I then also have a Psalm for the Wild Built and A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers I DNF'd The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet from Becky Chambers but I have heard fantastic things about these and I think they have quite a different vibe so I'm gonna give them a go. They are tiny novellas so work well for the 30 books in 30 days thing that I'm going for here but yeah that's the Monk and Robot duology or I don't know if there's gonna be more of that about a robot who has he been like abandoned like for centuries and then has come back to serve his purpose of like waiting on mankind or something and a tea monk um, and it apparently is quite wholesome and cute so we will see what I think of these um, maybe one for questioning humanity who knows but I'm excited to give these a go and then another couple of novellas I've got The Keepers 6 by Kate Elliott I've read Servant Mage by Kate Elliott and really enjoyed that um, but this one interests me so much more than that one. Uh, this is a sci-fi about dragons. Like what? A world hopping badass spell slinging mother who sets to rescue her kidnapped son from a dragon lord. There's an alien landscape stretching between worlds crossing boundaries of space and time the Hex will be tested by false dragon lords in a darkness so dense it can suffocate and the bones of an old crime come back to haunt her. There are terrors that dwell in the space between worlds. So I don't know if this is like a fantasy sci-fi hybrid. Are the dragon lords actually dragons? There seems to be some sort of dragon skull on the cover here and it looks like a portal into another world. I don't know but this just is very intriguing to me so I'm excited to give this one a go and again a little one which works well for 30 books in 30 days but one I'm very excited for. Let's move on to some bigger books that I am going to kick myself for wanting to read but Wrath by John Gwynne. Not a little book. Big book. Big book. Very big book for wanting to do 30 books in 30 days but I'm hoping if I can chip away at this gradually, it should be okay. But this is the fourth and final book in the Faithful of the Fallen series by John Gwynne. Ruin ruined me. If you've seen one of my recent vlogs, I, I cried a lot. Um, and it's the last one and I really want to wrap this series up. It's about two sides of a prophecy. We have the bright star and the dark sun um, and how they are destined to have this epic battle for like one in support of the godlike being and one in support of the devil like being like proper light versus dark epic battle there's giants there's politics there's lots of action there is the best animal companion i've enjoyed this series valor was a bit slow for me but Ruin ruined me and I really want to wrap this series up so I would love to get through Wrath in April so that's one big one. Um, apparently I'm just carrying on final book support group in April because another final book is Half a War by Joe Abercrombie. Now I haven't loved this trilogy. Half the King was alright, quick, alright. Half the World was again very quick read nothing amazing it was all right and this is the third and final one so I'm anticipating this again being a very quick read for me 
Not necessarily being amazing though. I just haven't loved this trilogy, but I do want to wrap it up, see how it ends, um, before I move into more of Joe Abercrombie's adult stuff. Um, but it should be a quick read because the other ones have been, despite the fact that it's not a tiny book, but they just read really fast. So there's that. The books in this trilogy like each follow a different character from the same world. So the first one follows um, the prince who needs to reclaim his rightful place as king. Um, and then the second book follows a different character after the events of that book. And then this one again takes place after the events of Half the World um, with a different main character. So there's hope that I may enjoy this a little bit more. We will see. I also need to read Voice of War. I should have read this in March. This was my March uh, Patreon buddy read. I am behind so I need to read this one very soon, i.e. I will probably start it soon after filming this. This is book one of the Threadlight trilogy and in April I will need to catch up reading this one and then also read the sequel which is Stones of something. Yeah. <laughs> stones. Something about stones. Um, this one's not massive. I don't think the second one's massive either. Um, but I really am behind. So I need to crack on with this. And hopefully it doesn't drag me down with the anticipation of 30 books in 30 days. That would be great. Um, I don't know anything about this and quite honestly I don't want to right now so I'm not going to read the blurb to tell you what it's about because I would like to go into this with very little expectation um, because I've heard both good and bad things about it so I really want to go in at like a blank slate and not have any uh, expectations of it so stay tuned to see what I think of this I guess. <laughs> And this one looks big, but I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, but Arcanum Unbounded, there are, I think, three short stories in this that I need to read before I can continue on with more Sanderson. I need to read The Eleventh Metal, Mistborn Secret History, and The Emperor's Soul, I think. I'm gonna have to check reading orders or anyone watching this comment down below for me which short stories I need to read after having finished Mistborn. So I've read Mistborn Era 1 and Mistborn Era 2. I have also read Elantris and I want to go into Warbreaker and then Stormlight. Um, so which short stories do I need to read before doing that I guess. I'll just check online. I'll, I'll look it up. I'll work it out. We'll be alright. The stack is stacking up. Um, and then to help me with 30 books in 30 days and also because I'm just having the best time with these I am going to be continuing Toilet Bound Hanakoken. Um, I am up to volume 9. This is volume 9, the next one I need to read. Um, and I have seven volumes left of this that I own to read and then I will need to expand my collection. If you haven't heard me talk about Toilet Bound before, this is about a young girl called Yashiro who summons a ghost from the toilet of her school. Um, this ghost is Hanakoken, who is said to be able to grant a wish for you if you summon them in the correct way. Um, but things do not go quite as expected for Yashiro when she summons this ghost and she ends up being tied to Hanako in a way that wraps her up in all of the other supernatural, paranormal things that happen in this school and all of the different mysterious creatures and rumours and so on of the school. It's good fun. It's a bit weird in places, but it's fun and I'm enjoying it so I will definitely be continuing. And then also one I'm desperate to continue and now have the volumes to enable me to do that is Witch Hat Atelier. I've still only read volume one of this. I really enjoyed it. I now own enough volumes for me to be able to continue. I was missing volume four and that concerned me, but I have it now. Um, but this is about a young woman who, or a young girl even, who wants to be a witch. Um, 
but witchcraft is a very protected thing in this world until she stumbles upon the way in which witchcraft is done, which means that she has to be apprenticed to a wizard. And she goes to this place to learn witchcraft where she is not very welcome. Um, but it was good fun, I enjoyed it, and I'm very excited to continue. Now, that is my pile of possibilities as it stands, however I am well aware that there are not 30 books there. And I think I am majorly just gonna take this month as it comes. Um, I will probably dip into some comics, like this one is showing out at me right now, which is Invisible Kingdom, Volume 2. Um, this is Amazon versus the church in space, um, is the best way for me to describe that. Um, I enjoyed volume one of this, would like to continue it. Um, I also have Ascender, I have Low, which I've been really enjoying and need to continue. So I've got some comics that will, again, help bulk up that number, but also a lot of the comics I have are sci-fi, so will work very well for Realmathon. Um, and I recently did, or kind of recently did, a video of my entire sci-fi TBR, so the likelihood of me diving into some of the books on there are quite high, because I need sci-fis for uh, those sweet sweet bonus points. But also any quick reads to bulk up that number are my friend this month. But that that is my current situation and my current plan. Um, send good vibes for all of the reading because I think I'm going to fail. I'll be totally honest with you. I don't think I'm going to manage 30 books in 30 days. But I am going to give it my best shot. Um, and I am excited about a lot of these books. And I'm glad that it's encouraged me to reach for some non-fiction as well. So there's that. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up here because I feel like I've been rambling far too long for a list of books that I may not even read. But I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, give us a thumbs up, chat to me down below, all that good stuff. Um, I hope your April reading goes incredibly well. I'm sending good vibes your way. And I shall see you in whatever comes next. Bye.